In this video, we're going to look at the first component of oxidation reduction reactions, and that is oxidation numbers. So to answer the question, why do we care about oxidation numbers, it comes down to what an oxidation reduction reaction is. So redox reactions are a set of reactions where you have some kind of transfer of an electron. So one species in the reactants gives up or gives up an electron and another species in the reactants receives that electron and it's the transfer of the electron from one species to another that results in the unique set of products that are different from the reactants so what oxidation numbers allow us to do is they allow us to track which species is losing the electron and which species is gaining the electron so that's why we care about oxidation numbers it's basically an accounting system for electrons so let's take a look at how we assign oxidation numbers. So there's basically a set of rules, and these rules are really helpful because once you follow the rules, you can, you can start to assign oxidation numbers pretty quickly, and then that's the first major step in uh, working with redox reactions. So the rules are uh, an oxidation number of an atom in an elemental form is zero. So whenever you have an atom, that is in the reactants and it's in its elemental form, you can easily assign that to be zero. So for example, if you see copper solid, that's gonna be a zero. Aluminum solid, that's gonna be a zero. Bromine liquid, that's bromine in its elemental form, that's gonna be zero. So it doesn't matter, an element on the periodic table in its standard form is gonna be zero. Okay, so now the, the oxidation number of, of a monatomic ion is the same as its charge. So like, for example, in calcium chloride, the calcium we know has a two plus charge and the chlorides have a minus one charge. So we can assign the oxidation number for calcium two plus to be plus two. And we can assign the charge of the chlorine in the, in, we can assign the charge of chloride in the calcium chloride to be a minus one. So if it's a monatomic ion, it's just the same as the charge. Now there are a couple of things that, that will help you with this. Oxygen, is always minus two. So for example, in Na2O, that gets a minus two charge. And some of this comes from our knowledge of the periodic table, right? We know that all halogens are gonna have minus one, oxygen is gonna, is, and that row is gonna have minus two, nitrogen is gonna have minus three. However, there is one case that you should be aware of. There is such a thing as what we call a peroxide. These do not come up very often. Uh, and when they do, you'll notice that it will be in an O2 kind of form. It'll be the O2 2 minus form. So in this particular instance, oxygen has a minus one charge. Now I would not focus on this terribly much. I would be aware of it and be mindful of it and watch out for it. If you see like H2O2 or an, a compound that is a peroxide, or if we say something about it being a peroxide, then you should know that it's the O2 two minus, and then the oxygen gets a minus one. Otherwise, for the most part, oxygen just gets minus two. Hydrogen is, generally speaking, always plus one when it's with nonmetals. So for example, in HCO3, that's a proton, so that's gonna be plus one. Or if it's with a metal, and this is a very rare circumstance, so if you were to have some kind of aluminum hydride or something like that, then it's gonna be a, um, a minus one. But for our purposes, generally the go-to for hydrogen is a plus one. And fluoride is always minus one. So like the other halogens, chloride, bromide. So the rules that apply to the periodic table generally apply to the oxidation numbers. Now the last one we're gonna spend a few seconds on because this is, this is really the, fundamentally the most important thing. So the sum of the oxidation numbers it, uh, of all the atoms must equal the charge on the species. So let's, like, let's take a look at this FeCN6 four minus example in a little bit more detail on a fresh slide. So if we have FeCN6, 4 minus, what this is basically getting at is it's the same idea as where we had to figure out what the charge of the iron is in this compound. So if I were to ask you, what is the charge of the iron in this, in this compound, you would go about the process of doing the same exact thing because remember, the charge of the uh, iron in this compound is gonna be the same as its oxidation number. So in this case, cyanide cn is minus and the question is is for iron is what is the charge so if we want to figure that out we know that we have one iron and we don't know what its charge is plus we have six times negative one and then the whole thing is equal to a minus four 
So x plus negative 6 is going to equal negative 4. So if we add 6 to both sides, we're going to get a plus 2. So x in this case is equal to plus 2. So the oxidation number on iron is equal to plus 2. And you know, you could do the same thing. So for example, for chromate, CrO42 minus, if you wanted to figure out the oxidation state of the, chrom the chromium in chromate, what we would do is we would say, well, the entire thing has a minus 2 charge. And so we have 4 times negative 2. I know that the oxygens have a negative 2 charge because oxide has a minus 2 charge. This is not a case where we have a peroxide or anything strange. So we give that the minus 2. And then we have X, which is our chromium. So this is going to be X minus 8 is equal to um, minus 2. So we add 8 to both sides and we get x is equal to plus 6. So our oxidation state for chromium is going to be plus 6 in this case. So that's an introduction to oxidation numbers, and in the next video we're going to put this to use as we look at oxidation, uh, oxidation reduction reactions and we start to track what's happening with the electrons.